Artur Axman the 18th of February 1913 to the 24th of October 1996 was the German Nazi national leader Reichsjugendführer of the Hitler Youth Hitlerjugend from 1940 to the war's end in 1945 He was the last living Nazi with a rank equivalent to Reichsführer Topic Early life Axman was born in Hagen, Westphalia, the son of an insurance clerk. In 1916, his family moved to Berlin Wedding, where his father died two years later. Young Axman was a good student and received a scholarship to attend secondary school. He joined the Hitler Youth in November 1928, after he heard Nazi Gauleiter Joseph Goebbels speaking, and became leader of the local cell in the Wedding District. He also joined the National Socialist Schoolchildren's League, where he distinguished himself as an orator. <inaudible> Nazi career In September 1931, Axmann joined the Nazi Party and the next year he was called to the NSDAP Reichsjugendführung to carry out a reorganization of Hitler Youth Factory and vocational school cells. After the Nazi seizure of power in 1933, he rose to a regional leader and became chief of the social office of the Reich Youth Leadership. Axmann directed the Hitler Youth in state vocational training and succeeded in raising the status of Hitler Youth agricultural work. In November 1934, he was appointed Hitler Youth Leader of Berlin and from 1936 presided at the annual Reichsberufswettkampf competitions. On 30 January 1939, he was awarded the Golden Party Badge. After World War II began, Axman was on active service on the Western Front until May 1940. On 1 May 1940, he was appointed deputy to Nazi Reichsjugendführer Balder von Schirach, whom he succeeded three months later on 8 August 1940. As a member of the Wehrmacht 23rd Infantry Division, he was severely wounded on the Eastern Front in 1941, losing his right arm. In early 1943, Axmann proposed the formation of the 12th SS Panzer Division Hitlerjugend to Heinrich Himmler, with servicemen drawn from the Hitler Youth. Hitler approved the plan for the combat division to be made up of Hitler Youth members born in 1926. Thereafter, recruitment and training began. In the last weeks of the war in Europe, Axmann commanded units of the Hitler Youth, which had been incorporated into the Home Guard Volkstrom. His units consisted mostly of children and adolescents. They fought in the Battle of Silo Heights and the Battle in Berlin. <laughs> Berlin, 1945 During Hitler's last days in Berlin, Axmann was among those present in the Führbunker. During that time it was announced in the German press that Axmann had been awarded the German Order, the highest decoration that the Nazi Party could bestow on an individual for his services to the Reich. He and one other recipient, Konstantin Hirl, were the only holders of the award to survive the war and its consequences. All other recipients were either awarded it posthumously, or were killed during the war or its aftermath. On 30 April 1945, just a few hours before committing suicide, Hitler signed the order to allow a breakout. According to a report made to his Soviet captors by Obergruppenführer Hans Rattenhuber, the head of Hitler's bodyguard, Axmann took the Walther PP pistol that had been removed from Hitler's sitting room in the Fuhrer bunker by Heinz Ling, Hitler's valet, which Hitler had used to commit suicide, saying that he would hide it for better times." On 1 May, Axmann left the Führbunker as part of a breakout group that included Martin Bormann, Werner Naumann and SS Dr. Ludwig Stumpfegger. Attempting to break out of the Soviet encirclement, their group managed to cross the river spree at the Weidendammer Bridge, leaving the rest of their group, Bormann, Stumpfegger, and Axmann walked along railway tracks to Lairder Railway Station. Bormann and Stumpfegger followed the railway tracks towards Stettiner Station. Axman decided to go in the opposite direction of his two companions. When he encountered a Red Army patrol, Axman doubled back. He saw two bodies, which he later identified as Bormann and Stumpfegger, on the Invalidenstrasse bridge near the railway switching yard Lairder Bonhof, the moonlight clearly illuminating their faces. He did not have time to check the bodies thoroughly, so he did not know how they died. His statements were confirmed by the discovery of Bormann's and Stumpfegger's mortal remains in 1972. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Post-war. 
Axman avoided capture by Soviet troops and lived under the alias of Eric Seward for several months. In December 1945, Axman was arrested in Lübeck when a Nazi underground movement which he had been organizing was uncovered by a U.S. Army counterintelligence operation. In May 1949, a Nuremberg denazification court sentenced Axman to a prison sentence of three years and three months as a major offender. He was not found guilty of war crimes. On 19 August 1958, a West Berlin court fined the former Hitler Youth leader 35,000 marks approximately £3,000, or $8,300 USD, about half the value of his property in Berlin. The court found him guilty of indoctrinating German youth with National Socialism until the end of the war in Europe, but concluded he was not guilty of war crimes. Later life After his release from custody, Axman worked as a businessman with varying success. From 1971 he left Germany for a number of years, living on the Spanish island of Gran Canaria. Axman returned to Berlin in 1976, where he died on 24 October 1996, aged 83. His cause of death and details of his surviving family members were not disclosed. Portrayal in the media Axman was portrayed by Harry Brooks Jr. in the 1973 British television production The Death of Adolf Hitler. See also Glossary of Nazi Germany List of Nazi Party leaders and officials <laughs>